those that have their video those that have their video on will be recorded while those with it turned off will not uh, chat or not be recorded my name is alex uh, my pronouns are he him his and i'll be hosting tonight's event our facilitators are annie christopher crystal emily jason monique and chiwan tonight they'll be monitoring the chat facilitating breakout rooms and be there for technical support feel free to message any of them if you have an issue to begin with i would like to acknowledge that ubc vancouver is located on the traditional ancestral and unceded land of the musqueam people this land has always been a place of learning for the musqueam and as we gather here today to speak about learning and research through european centric ways of knowing we should also reflect on indigenous ways of knowing that have nearly been completely lost and how we can act to support it. LFSA stands for Academic and Career Engagement Team. We are a group of LFS students invested in creating a sense of community and support in the areas of academics and career related development opportunities for you, our peers. Our focus tonight will be uh, our focus tonight will be stepping into research. We will be asking our panelists, Kenny, Afnan, and Tony, for a brief introduction. Um, so, Kenny, will you please introduce yourself? Sure thing. Thanks, Alex. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Kenny, and I'm in my fifth year of uh, Bachelor of Science in the Global Research Systems Program with a focus on international development. And my research experience has come from being a data analysis assistant for an animal welfare research project that was a part of a course called AppVise 398. And in turn, from that experience of helping out with the data analysis piece, I prepared a poster for Merck 2021, which I believe was the first Merck that transitioned to online from the pandemic with a poster titled The Public Perceptions Regarding Cow-Calf Rearing Systems Within the Dairy Industry. And, and, I, and I'll, I'll stop there for now, and I can pass it off to the other panelists. Yeah, thank, thank you, Kenny. Uh, next, we have Afnan. Thanks, Alex. Hi, everyone. My name is Afnan. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, home for me is Toronto, Ontario, so just on the east coast of Canada, and I'm really excited to be here. So my start to research is a little bit unconventional, actually. I lived in Orchard Commons, which is one of the first year residences at UBC, and um, because they are single connected, I basically had like a roommate. And so my roommate was in the Science One program, and the Science One program is a, a gateway program for first year students. And so they had this opportunity to go and volunteer at one of the labs at the BD Biodiversity Museum. And so they told me about it and I was like, this sounds really cool. Sounds like something I'd really be interested in because I am in my fifth year majoring in applied animal biology in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems. And so being a lover of animals, I thought, great, it's a BD Biodiversity Museum. They have lots of specimens and lots of animals. So I started going into this lab to volunteer and then I started, essentially what it was is you would do specimen prep. So that means that you were, you were dissecting all these different animals and stuffing them and then pinning them to be specimens in the museum. And so this was a form of research because it actually enables other researchers who want to study the animals that we're prepping to have these specimens ready. So what that means is if I'm working on prepping a squirrel and then somebody else wants to do research on squirrels, they can then come into the museum and use the specimen that I prepared for their own research. So from that, something that I did very often was just like say hello to everyone that was in the lab. Um, it was like once a week. And so through that, I was actually able to start my very first job at UBC, which was at the BD Biodiversity Museum as a Cohen Tetrapod Collection Assistant. So this was a little bit different than what I did for my volunteer position. This meant that I got to update the online database by photographing the different specimens that we have. So I worked on the tetrapod collection, which means mammals and birds. And so if you go on the BD Biodiversity Museum now and you want to take a look at the different specimens that they have on there, um, you'll see photos of bats that I actually photographed for the museum, as well as the most up-to-date database. 
And so by networking, as I did mention that I would like say hello to people, I was actually able to go as a field research assistant for the Irwin lab, which is an ornithology lab for genomics for birds right here at UBC. So I actually just met this person in the lab while working at BD and they were like, you seem like you'd be great, come be my field research assistant. It wasn't even a formal application or anything like that. And I was like, heck yeah, this sounds great, let's do it. So we went up to North BC, we caught all these different birds and I always wanted to have live animal experience because at the in the museum, the animals were not alive. So it was really incredible because I was helping this PhD student as a research assistant, helping them catch birds, taking different samples of blood and feathers if a feather would fall, we would not pluck their feathers. That's not very humane. And then releasing them back and actually got to live in a camper van. It was a whole ordeal. Um, it was really interesting and just such a great way to get my hands into actual field research because I've always been interested in research, but really how can you know if you've never tried it? And then my field or my research kind of ended there after COVID hit just because COVID hit and I wasn't able to go into the lab to really analyze the data that we found anymore because I wasn't essential for that lab. And then I took the same course that Kenny took, which is at by 398. And it's such a great course for research because part of it is you have to do 20 hours working with a research mentor. And so right now I'm actually volunteering as this mentor position at a biomedical engineering laboratory at UBC. It's really, really new. It's called the Shakiba Lab. Um, and it's really cool because I'm getting to work on well, first of all, I'm getting to work in a biomedical engineering lab being an LFS, which is so different, but also um, it's a new field research of biomedical engineering. So we're working, we're doing a lot of cell work. So I just got to learn how to do PCR, which I learned about in class, but now I get to apply it, which is so cool. And I also get to prepare different DNA uh, plasmids to input into cells and things like that. And I also hope to present just like Kenny did at Merck, which is the multidisciplinary undergraduate research conference. And so this is a really great opportunity because if you are really interested in research and you wanna to apply to masters or anything like that, it's also something that you can say, hey, I actually presented my research at a real conference. Yeah, so that's a little bit about my research. I'm really excited to share more in the breakout rooms and I'll pass it back to Alex. Thank you, Afnan. And now, uh... Tony. Hey, Alex, thanks for passing it off to me. So yeah, my name's Tony. I am a first year master's student in the Stefanska lab at UBC. Um, I just graduated from uh, the Food, Nutrition and Health program uh, back in December of uh, last year. And so how I started getting to research actually stemmed from um, a fa quote unquote failure in second year. Um, when I tried to apply into dietetics and I didn't get in. So after that, that was actually a really big turning point for me because it made me like reflect upon like kind of what exactly I really wanted to do. And because uh, initially I had my sights so focused on dietetics. Um, so I was like volunteering at uh, various clinics, things like that. And from my experience, um, it didn't um, kind of marry my passions of like molecular science and nutrition as much as I'd uh, have hoped. Um, so then because of that, I um, kind of just started digging around at UBC thinking about, okay, how can I, are there any professors available that like do kind of like molecular nutrition research? Um, so then at first I was just like reaching out to random professors in LFS um, who had a realm in like molecular nutrition. Um, I met with a couple, uh, they didn't turn out so well, um, but then I landed on um, my current professor who also just recently came to UBC and she specializes in yeah molecular nutrition. So I emailed her, um, she was willing to have a meeting with me and this was over the course of the summer. So then I came to campus and then we, I had like, uh, in my mind, kind of like a informational interview kind of thing. So I had a list of questions I wanted to ask my prof. Um, and then we ended up like talking about that, but we also ended up just chatting in general for like an hour and a half. So um, eventually uh, she pointed me towards like a club that uh, where she talks about where it's kind of involved in her research. It's called like the epigenetics club. Um, so then I started getting introduced into the realm of epigenetics and then seeing how nutrition is connected to that. 
And so I landed into the very uh, niche field of nutritional epigenomics, which is currently um, what I'm studying in the lab right now. Um, but before all of before starting my master's, I also volunteered in um, the Stefanska lab throughout my third and fourth years and fifth year. Um, so initially, it was me just coming to the lab um, first, like seeing all these kind of like fancy gadgets and things like that, getting oriented around in the lab. Um, and then once I had learned a bit more about epigenetics, um, I was able to, uh, so I talked to Dr. Stefanska about um, doing a directed studies project uh, under her. And that really um, kind of pulled me in towards the realm of research because I was able to find these concepts and um, theories that aren't well explored right now. And that really like, I was able to find my uh, niche that really made me excited to want to delve deeper into this kind of knowledge. Um, so after completing my directed studies, uh, I then talked to Dr. Stefanska about um, potentially going towards grad school and things like that. And then uh, doing my own research, like on the process of uh, doing uh, grad school and everything, there are some requirements that you need to meet, but uh, one of the most important is securing your supervisor for uh, if you want to go into grad school. Um, so really like, I suggest like reaching out to whatever professor you think piques your interest and having like scheduling some kind of uh, meeting with them in order to discuss more in detail, like what your career goals are, what you wanna um, eventually do. And it's completely fine to not be sure at the moment, um, but maybe that can steer you into something that you uh, are passionate about and you want to do. Um, so that's just a little spiel on how I got into research. Sorry if I took longer than five minutes, my bad, but I'll hand it back to Alex now. Yeah, it was great. Thank you, Tony. Um, so now that we've got a brief idea about each participant, uh, we will go into breakout rooms. Uh, each room will have one panelist and then you can ask them your questions. After eight minutes, we will move the panelists around the breakout rooms. And then we will do this once more after another eight minutes so that you will have had the chance to meet every panelist. Finally, uh, we will close the breakout rooms and have some closing remarks. Uh, we would like to encourage the use of your camera during the conversation to make it more engaging and also to use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen when taking turns to ask questions. Or you can post your questions in the chat. Uh, now let the fun begin. And, and I can go on that tangent, but I, I don't worry at all. <laughs> but I can answer the question. So the three biggest pieces of advice that I can give to students getting involved in research would be number one, recognize the why in participating in research, or at least find a reason that why you would want to uh, get involved and learn research. Because for me, unlike uh, Unlike Tony and Afman, I was I wasn't fully set on the idea of research. I was sort of dabbling on the idea, so I figured taking a course like App by Three Ninety Eight with the whole premise of getting research uh, experience as well as the skills needed to do research work, such as a literature review, which is essentially skimming through all, all the available literature that is addressing your uh, topic of research that you've set and data analysis has been was the key factor for me I wanted to just learn and get a sense of how scientists and researchers work because uh, for my future career goals that's what I was more interested in and the second piece of advice would be asking questions through and through the process where as long as you come in into a research role, obviously you won't know everything there is to research. So it's important to just make sure that you, ha you have questions ready to ask and that you're open to ask those to your fellow peers or even your supervisors. I think it would be helpful, not, 
not just to break the ice and get to know your supervisors and uh, and fellow researchers more, but also just learn along the way. This is a place after all where you can just learn and be able to take risk, given that everyone's an undergraduate student, I'm guessing in this room. And my third piece of advice ties in nicely, which is just go for it. This is after all, like I said, a place for undergraduates to just learn. For me, the course was open enough where I can just ask questions, be able to really understand what goes behind the research project and what, what are the ways to even present research as well. So if you have a clear intention behind every question you ask, professors will take note and they'd be more than happy to support. Thank you for those tips. Um, and then another question I have for you is, um, what do you think is a common misconception that undergraduate students have about research, about how to get involved? Because often students usually think master's students or graduate students go into research. So what do you have to say about undergraduate research? Another good question then. I can start with uh, the first misconception I have with research is that uh, you'd have to work in the lab 24 seven. And uh, granted my experience might be a bit different because I took a course that was focusing on research methods. But uh, from my experience, I didn't have to work in the lab all that much even because the, the, the data was already collected from the uh, research associate that I was working with, uh, which was a research student at the animal welfare program. And she already had the data to help uh, visualize and help analyze. So her research was focusing on the public perception on uh, cow-calf rearing methods within uh, specifically amongst dairy cows. And that research had a lot of qualitative data. So a lot of uh, words and expressions, which are a little bit different from the typical quantitative data that you'd find in a lab setting. So I was able to uh, get the data from her. She was able to share it with me and I would work with her uh, or meet with her rather once uh, every one to two weeks and just check in with her progress, just uh, maintaining that communication and being able to uh, figure out what's the best way to visualize the data. So it can, it can be a lot of independent work from the research perspective, but that doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities to get involved and, uh, like I said, talk with fellow peers and uh, discuss on ways the research can go forward. Are there specific resources that you would recommend or people or like clubs or anything that you would recommend people approach? Oh, that's at the top of my mind, I can't say any particular research programs. I'm sure the ACE team would have a couple of resources up their sleeves. But uh, for me, it was just uh, finding ways that are accessible to me in terms of research. Uh, what are some ways I can get involved and just quickly learn? And yeah, it was at by 398. Parisa? I did have one question for you, Kenny. Just because I'm also a GRS student, I wanted to know how this experience, how do you see this experience fitting in with your degree and what you're specializing in, which was, I believe, international development? Yes, that's right. Oh, I like that question. And yeah, it's, it's nice to see a fellow GRS student in the room. Uh, for me, I, I, was more I was more interested in taking the course because I wanted to learn how scientists and researchers do their work and tying it to international development. Uh, international development would involve a lot of work across different stakeholders and across uh, different sort of roles in order to bring any type of project to success. So whether that may be business leaders, scientists or politicians, I took the course as a way to explore for myself how research is done, how it can be a bit of a lengthy process to get uh, any, I guess, uh, in, a, in a word, uh, concrete progress within the research and in terms of getting approval 
from any journals, any approval from supervisors in the beginning as well. And, and, I, th and I think with that uh, experience under my belt, I can better understand and I can better communicate ideas with researchers and be able to understand where they're coming from and uh, be able to share some of the ideas regarding a project in their own context, which I think would be very important. Thank you for that question. Um, our time with Kennedy, no, with not Kennedy, with Kenny is up. So I'm going to be moving Kenny to room three. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Um, Afnan, you're up, you're in the hot spot. Um, so could you tell us, um, often students get like a little worried about and getting involved in research because of how competitive it is. We often don't feel too confident about our background knowledge. What's your advice for overcoming that? Sorry, I was struggling to unmute. Thanks for your question. I would say the best way is to just honestly to like put yourself out there and just try and get to know and show interest in other professors or PhD or master's students research. So what I mean by that is if you're in a course and the professor usually in the very beginning will introduce themselves in the, the first lecture and they'll say, this is what I'm studying, this is my own research and this is why it makes me fit to teach this course. If you find that that professor's research is of interest to you, go into their office hours and ask them about their research. Professors love to talk about themselves. And believe me, I know they'll talk about themselves forever. And they'll tell you all about their research because they're doing this for their career. So they're obviously very excited about it. And then you can say, well, I'm really interested. I'd like to work with you. And then once you start working, um, and chances are they'll take you on or they'll refer you to someone else. They'll never just deny you. So they'll say, oh, I'm at capacity in my lab, but you know, check out this other lab or, Oh, personally, like I already have taken on a couple of students, but here's a graduate student in my lab who's looking for someone and this is their project. And in this way, you can really get into that area of research. And yes, it's competitive, but believe me, PhD students and master's students and professors have so much on their plate always that they would never turn down, or very rarely turn down somebody who wants to volunteer and is interested in their work. If anything, they could use the help. Yeah, that's really good to hear. <laughs> um, and what would your, let's say, two biggest piece of, pieces of advice for students wanting to get involved in research? What would those be? My first piece of advice would say to really explore. So I know that I, or I think, that I'm interested in doing animal welfare research. However, I've tried out all these different types of research. No, I've never done the same research twice. So. For my first year, I mentioned I was working in, in the museum and then I went and I did um, research with birds and genomics and how birds hybridize. And I found that to be really interesting, but it didn't really like hit the right spot. Not to say that I didn't enjoy it. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was so interesting and I learned a lot, which is really great because a lot of the skills are very much transferable. But then I went and I tried um, this research that I'm doing now and it's so different but it's also really interesting to me. So I would say try out all the different things and different areas of research because one, you're not in graduate school yet. So you don't even have to like really commit to one. And two, it's really good to see what's out there, see what you like and what you don't like because I didn't think I would like cell work this much but I'm really, really enjoying it. So now I'm trying to think of ways to incorporate it into my own research. And so it's interesting because had I not done that and tried different things, I would have never really known. And then the second piece of advice would be to show interest. I always used to ask my TAs like, oh, what's your research? What are you working on? And I would ask my professors like, what are you doing? What's your research? What projects do you, have you taken on right now? And then in this way, I'll find out what's actually available in the field and what's feasible. Because a lot of people I would say can have, sometimes have tunnel vision when it comes to research and think research is just one way, but really it's so diverse and so different. 
And there are so many novel areas of research that people don't know about. So by chatting with other people and showing interest in other people's research, then you can maybe start to think about how you want your own research to look and even see if it's for you because maybe you'll ask someone and you'll think, hmm, I think research isn't for me. It's not the career path I wanna go down, which is totally okay as well. That's amazing advice. <laughs> um, does anyone have a question for Afnan? If not, I will ask, um, do you have any, do you mind debunking some common misconceptions about research? Yes. So people think research is very much like sitting in a lab, doing the different samples or specimens or whatever it is, wearing the lab coat. But I think research is so much more, I don't think, I know research is so much more than that. Um, because there's a lot of different types and areas of research. So there's, for, I was just telling the other recurring, room, like there's research in social work, for example, where you go out and you work with farmers and you have focus groups and you do interviews. And then there's type of research where, you know, you're getting samples and you're analyzing them in the lab, but that's not what it always is. And so it's really important to understand what is out there because maybe you don't see yourself as someone who wants to go into the lab every day, but that doesn't necessarily mean that research is not for you. Because when we think of arts disciplines such as philosophy or history or anthropology, I doubt that they go into the lab every day, but very much their work is still considered to be research and still contributes to academia. And so one big myth is that you have to put on the coat and go into the lab, but that's not true because research can take so many different forms and it's not static. So with animal research, you have to do field work, and then you have to take time to go into the lab and analyze your results. And then you have to take time to write. So it's not just one thing always. So it's really good to have that well-roundedness because research can also be very holistic. That's, that's really good to hear. Um, I believe Lini has a question for you. Yeah, I was thinking, Afna, and I know everyone has different experiences with research, but what was the most challenging part of your research experience? And how did you get through that challenge? Selena, I think you already know this, but the most challenging um, research for me was when I went up to North BC to do field research during COVID. This was particularly a little bit challenging because we, all the campgrounds were closed, which means that we had to just really camp out in the forest um, to go and catch these different birds that we needed for to sample for field for our field season. And so it was just different because it's not anything like something I've ever done before. Uh, and then the way that we overcame it was really, you just have to be able to problem solve and be really flexible and think on your feet. Cool. <laughs> No. I'm gonna finish oh, hi. Uh, I believe Afna was saying be flexible um, and think on your feet. <laughs> so hi Tony. Hi. Um so um let's start off with more, a more general question. Uh what would your two biggest pieces of the advice for undergrads wanting to get involved in research be? Mm hmm. hmm. I'd say the first thing is that I can only speak from my experience, but the first thing that I thought was helpful for my case was that I really knew what I was interested in. So like back in my second end of second year, um, yeah, I didn't get into dietetics. So that made me like I did a lot of self-reflection after that spring so during the summer and I like pinpointed that I really want to be able to uh, be involved in molecular biology in molecular nutrition and some kind of disease like I always had a fascination with cancer and so these were the three kind of I guess overarching themes that I wanted to uh, encompass and I think that really helped me narrow my focus because there's so many research disciplines at UBC and the more specific you can get the more clear you will understand what kind of research you want to conduct or that you're interested in uh, pursuing and then my second piece of advice would be hmm
yeah, don't be afraid to reach out to professors. I know it can be like pretty scary because there's this power dynamic, like for sure, because they're a professor and you're like an undergrad, but like a majority of profs want to help out. And like, um, it is really rewarding to um, kind of nurture a new student into a fully capable scientist. And that's something um, profs, uh, like for example, if they're going into tenure track or anything, like they'll need to have um, mentoring students, like the number or uh, how many students they helped get through like grad school, like both masters and PhD. So it's like, it's not only for your benefit, but it's also the prof's benefit. And uh, I'll just add another third one, but don't be afraid of failure. Like honestly, the amount of times I failed has been way more than the amount of times I've succeeded in something. And I think grad school is like, you're gonna have to be a lot more comfortable with un the unknown and failure, which can be pretty difficult because to get into grad school, you kind of have to be a strong student. So you're already like coming from undergrad, you're used to being correct a lot of the time. Like you worked really hard, you studied really hard and you got your results. but that necessarily isn't always the case in grad school. You can work really hard and like you think something is true, but you end up failing. And that can, that really sucks. Like it's happened to me, but it's really helps to have a supervisor that kind of is able to pick you up from, like lift you out of that mentality because mistakes are always bound to happen. And they're not necessarily a bad thing. Like mistakes are the only way we really learn, right? You don't really learn anything if you conducted it correctly. If you mess up, then that's how you learn. So I don't know if I answered the question. Was that the question? Did I answer the question? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You answered. Uh -huh. <laughs> you gave really good advice. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of finding a good supervisor, you said, what do you look for in a good supervisor that will help you grow? Right. Uh, I guess in my case, I, hmm, I kind of really just asked to meet with them, just to chat with them, and I could kind of get a feel for how, like, what their mentorship style is, and as well as, uh, like, soft skills, their interpersonal, like, communication style and everything, because that's actually, that's probably one of the most important things is you really need to have a strong like supervisor student relationship um and you too like your prof and yourself you guys are a team and you're working on a single project for your grad school so you guys have to like get along and be able to have difficult conversations like i've definitely had half i've had to have like uncomfortable conversations with my supervisor and no one likes these conversations but it's the only way you both can um, like get through like any uh, ruts that you're in or any mistakes that pop up or anything. So what I really look for in my supervisor that I think was, that helped me was their communication style. And I guess like, I'm super grateful that my supervisor is also like, she really cares about our mental well-being. Um, so she really like uh, talks about like, we have kind of like even like weekly like lab meetings where sometimes if time allows, we just get a cup of coffee and we just chat. And so like being able to have this, um, I wouldn't say friendship, but like a professional rapport or professional communication that's also friendly with your prof is probably, I think, the most important thing that I looked for in my supervisor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can agree that's very important. Parisa? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did have one question because you're a master's student right now. Mm -hmm. and um, currently I'm in my fourth year and I was just wondering what was it like for you to like apply to a master's or like the process of applying and if at any point were you thinking of doing your master's at another university besides UBC? Mm -hmm. um, I think for me uh, because I graduated like once lockdown started so that was a whole shebang um, but then because the 
like I talked to my prof about it and we were generally uh, set on the idea of me starting my grad studies in her lab. But that was because also I've been volunteering in her lab for the past like two years of my undergrad. Um, so then she like pointed me towards like um, what I need to prepare. So like having your grades, like maintaining high GPA, and in terms of like deadline, um, it's pretty flexible actually, um, at least at UBC. Um, I primarily had contact with the like grad school advisor and I told them like, yeah, I was planning on applying to masters. I saw that the, like I missed the deadline, an important deadline. And I was like, oh, um, also it was a strange situation because lockdown, none of us have experienced this. So I think there was some leniency there, um, but like talking to the grad school advisor um, of the program that you're interested in. I can only speak to UBC's experience. I can't really speak to any other university, but I'm hoping they would have a similar uh, flexibility with these deadlines. Um, so really communicating with, yeah, the grad school advisor is um, really important for applying either to your master's or your PhD and things like that. Parisa, I also wanted to note to you that we're going to have a grad event coming up at the end of um, November, so you can keep an eye out for that. And I believe we'll be moved to the main room soon. So thank you for telling us about your um, research experience. No worries. Um, I think I'm going to send us back. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, we have one minute. <laughs> Is that okay? Uh, welcome back, everyone. We hope you all managed to ask your questions and that you've gained some insight on how to get into research. Now, as we end the event, we'd like for you to participate in a Zoom chat waterfall activity. We will give you two minutes to write your question, to, to write your answer to the question. What is one new relate, research related aspect you learned about in today's event? Uh, but do not, do not send the question immediately. We will all hit send at the end of two minutes to create a virtual waterfall. So if you could please begin typing in the chat, but don't send it yet. Okay, um, so there's like 10 seconds left. Uh, please make sure to type everything you want to. Um, so on at five, we'll send it in five, four, three, two, one, send. Great. Uh, that's awesome.
Uh, so many of you learned something new. Um, and so uh, I would like to advertise our next LFS ACE event, which is a workshop event on social anxiety and stress management. 